we will promote the sight, sound, taste, history, and people of South Pittsburgh, Tennessee. We will do this by creating a grand annual festival. Our hope is to promote all civic, church, school, and municipal organizations in South Pittsburgh. And we will do this by giving the people an opportunity to work in the festival and share in the financial rewards. We saw pride leaving our community. We saw people giving up on our downtown because five years before a shopping center was formed on an interstate two miles away. The bypass was now going to bypass our downtown and we saw a flight from downtown. Any of the storefronts were closed, were abandoned and we hated to see it. It's one of the most beautiful spots on the face of the earth. And a number of us decided that we needed to do something to bring out-of-towners back to our downtown area. We thought about the possibility of some sort of festival. Right after Christmas, about January 1st, there's just this feeling that starts coming over this town. And you know it's cornbread time in Tennessee. My name is George Hampton. Our main objective is to feed the masses. We have, on average, 30 to 35 food vendors. Everything from pinto beans and cornbread till Italian sausage. Everybody just starts talking about, hey, what's new at the festival? What are you going to do this year? What new foods are you going to have? What new entertainment do you have lined up? In the effort to get more cornbread in the Cornbread Festival, we decided to do a Cornbread Alley. Cornbread Alley is the bomb. They do charge a small fee, but you get a whole plate full of cornbread. Cornbread you would never even think would be cornbread. And I decided to go get nine different groups to come in and cook nine different kinds of cornbread for the two days. Last year we had Tutti Frutti Corn Bob. We've had Hush Puppies. Chicken cornbread, Mexican cornbread. They have broccoli, they have Hush Puppies, they have, oh, so much. And then you take that recipe that feeds eight to 10 and figure out how to feed 40,000. And believe me, that is a humongous grocery list. And you get to come down the alley and you sample all the cornbread. It's a wonderful full plate for the time to get down. And there's cheers and there's competitions. Then at the end of the line, you get to vote. And believe you me, there is some heated competition to see who wins that year's coveted prize of having the most popular cornbread in the alley. Of course, we won a couple of times. <laughs> We are a nonprofit organization. Everyone that does this festival is a true volunteer. The festival pulls volunteers from a number of areas. A lot of the youth groups at the surrounding schools, including our local high schools, the teachers and the parents promote that the students get involved. I never have problems getting volunteers because our students love the Cornbread Festival. Our 7th through 12th grade has about 170 students, and I'd say about 100 to 120 will participate. On the Friday before the Cornbread Festival, uh, myself and several others bring several students down from school. We have students that set up for the festival, help put stages up and bleachers up. Help set the tents up, set chairs, tables. Work for from 8 o'clock till three or four, sometimes five o'clock in the evening. Leo Club will come down, they'll have a cold way, and also the different classes, the freshman class, sophomore class, junior class. We do a community service for the Cornbread Festival by running a uh, Coke booth, and we operate one of the booths in Cornbread Alley. And they're pretty much there from the Friday before it ever starts in the morning, setting up for the festival until many hours after the festival is over, helping. And then the Cornbread Festival usually donates some money to those for working the Coke booths. I think last year they got about $2,000 to donate towards whatever the baseball team decides they need to spend the money on, whether it's uniforms or, or to help pay for buses on trips or whatever it would be. The Boy Scouts have benefited by raising money and using that money to fund boys' summer camp experience. And in their summer camp experience, they, the boys would get exposed to a lot of different adventures that they would not normally get to do, like shooting, climbing, whitewater rafting trips, and, uh, 
canoeing trip, backpacking. The county can only afford to give so much money, but the Cornbread Festival makes money, then they make a donation to our shop. And then the Cornbread Festival gave me a check for uh, $10,000. We say, wow, that's something else. 10,000 bucks. Put tears in my eyes and almost still does now, but, but you know, some of that money's still there. The kids, we use extra money to do certain projects and certain other things. The Cornbread Festival is always generous to our school. They donate money to our various clubs that participate. Our boys basketball team that works the Cornbread Alley, uh, one year they donate enough money to help them buy some uniforms. Leo Club and our Interact Clubs that work in the Children's Corner, they get nice donations that help them do more things with the community. One of the things we've done is redone the whole baseball field. They also helped in doing the uh, weight room for the football stadium. Uh, they also donated money for our new gymnasium that was built. But uh, the Cornbread Festival has been very generous to the schools for the for some of the work that we've done and everything else. And uh, I think it really builds a lot of character for the students. The National Cornbread Cook-Off is a competition with main dish cornbread. The Cook-Off is sponsored by Lodge Manufacturing and Martha White. And every year about January, it's put out on our website that it's time for the original recipe contest to start. They all send in recipes. They get about 2,000 entries or so a year right now, and they read all of those, and then they decide which 30 are the best. They bake those 30, taste them, and decide which 10 are the best of the 30. Then those folks are brought here to compete in person um, and then be judged the weekend of the festival. We've had people as far as New York City and Wyoming and Washington State, the key is you have to use a large cast iron skillet and you have to use Martha White cornbread. And everything else is left up to their creativity. And so then they start Saturday morning baking their cornbread. We invite members of the media to be judges. And then the judges taste that and then the other five do their recipe, cook it, the judges taste that. And then the winner right now receives $5,000 in cash and a, a great big nice five star range from Brown Stuff. We also have student competition, which is 4-H, and we actually have gotten pretty regional with that in the fact that we have gotten children from as far north as Kentucky and south as Alabama and Georgia to come here to compete as well. My name is Sarah Gaines, and I'm affiliated with Randolph United Methodist Church. Uh, my name is George Holland, and I'm uh, with the South Pittsburgh Cumberland Presbyterian Church. We have been working at the Cornbread Alley for 10 years. We've been involved ever since the beginning of the festival in 1997. I am the mixer. I mix. My sisters use it. They cook the food, and then we have another member that serve it. Some of us are there. Uh, early morning before daylight and so well after dark. We're there about 14 to 16 hours a day. Uh, and being a small church, you know, finances are always an issue for us. And we don't have any other fundraiser. During the winter time, utilities are always higher and takes a bite out of our budget. We have been able to furnish the annex, ladies lounge, and put in our building fund. The music of the festival is very important because we have people that love to come and jam at the jam tent and that's where anybody that wants to whether they're great or whether they're just a beginner on the guitar or banjo mandolin anything like that they bring their instrument and they just come down and sit under the jam tent and they can stay all day long for two days or they can stay for an hour and they just kind of throw down with everybody else we have gazebos that hold maybe one or two people and they are there to play their music Sometimes there are young people of local origin just right here in town that are really good singers. And then we have the main stage tent, which houses everything from cornbread eating contests to buttermilk chugging contest, and then also all kinds of a variety of music. And then this year, which is fabulous, we've got this wonderful auditorium, The Princess, so we'll be having music in this venue also. And we've been waiting for a long time and putting a lot of money into this venue so we can get it going and have music indoors for everybody to listen to too. 
we have a wonderful street dance on Friday night and we have a great band that comes in and we'll have it's totally free everybody just comes down and sits on hay bales and dances and has a great time and that's the kickoff to the festival. My name is Carolyn Kellerman Milheiser. In 1999, a group decided to try to keep the princess from being torn down and turned into a parking lot. The city bought the building and formed a commission to restore the princess. The back wall was falling in, one side wall was falling in, there was a hole in the roof. And in 2001, the National Cornbread Festival awarded the grant that year to the, the Historic Society to pay for the services of an architect to draw the plans for the restoration. That not only paid for the architect, but it gave the Historic Society credibility within the community. And we were able to parlay that into applying for state and federal grants. And before it was over with, the Historic Society did the phase one of the Princess Theater. But the seed money from the Cornbread Festival really got us started. We raised over $800,000 to do the first phase, and of that, 100000 came from the Cornbread Festival. This is one of the best things in, that's happened in the Central Business District. There'll be jazz concerts, fiddling contests, gospel singing. Uh, uh, already a lot of that is scheduled. Those things, when you have things like that in, in any community, it's the, the, the offshoot is it fills up the restaurants. And then besides the music, we have crafters, arts and craft vendors. Now, everything that's in the festival, crafts-wise, has to be homemade. Nothing is imported from anywhere. Nothing's um, bought somewhere and then resold here. It's every bit of the arts and crafts, they're juried, so they have to go through a process of a judging process to get in and then they offer their wares. And we have everything from some small item that maybe just costs five dollars all the way up to some very high dollar art or handmade bowls out of wood or ceramics or different things like that. So there's a big variety of arts and crafts that are here. Most of the time we kick corner, which we love because there's a lot of activities there that are free to the public that most places would charge. In the children's corner there are games, ring toss, shoot basketball, they have face painting, blow up castle, the blow up slide. Oh, but my son loves it. He gets his face painted every year, wants to see the clown and all, all the fun activities that they've got for the kids. He really enjoys it, so it makes it worthwhile. People who want to take a tour of the Lodge Foundry, the Cornbread Festival is the only opportunity that they can do that. The foundry doors are open and the employees of Lodge will take you through the process of making cast iron. The foundry itself, the iron is not actually running, but you can see each step of the process and learn how the cast iron cookware is made. The Marion County Children's Fund is a 501c3 organization and don't really have a steady uh, income as it were, so we we're able to get the uh, proceeds from that. We help sell tickets. And then in the afternoon, for the past five or six years, we've had uh, what we call a celebrity cook-off uh, with various and sundry uh, gift items. Basically, we have the pancake breakfast, so we always mix all the batter, and uh, the Rotary Club does the actual cooking, and so we're always trolleying uh, batter over to the stove for them. and. You know, it really is kind of fun, although you have to start at six, six o'clock in the morning. The stipend that the state gives to foster parents is really not enough to cover uh, the expenses of a child, an extra child in the home. Uh, we provide toiletries to all the schools. We also provide the quote-unquote school uniform. And we also, over the years, have done things like buy scout uniforms for them, uh, a band instrument, a cheerleader outfit things that are, end up being fairly expensive that a foster parent, who usually themselves have three or four children at home, just really won't be able to do. So I guess if you put it in a nutshell, we try to make their lives more normal. Another thing we're very proud of is for the last six years, we've been able to give a $1,000 scholarship to four children in the county. There's four high schools, and they're helping to go to college. 
we're very blessed, we feel, to have the Cornbread Festival. We have been very fortunate to win not once but twice the coveted top 20 events in the Southeast. And so by giving that distinction of top 20 events, it's brought a lot of people into the area that may not have heard about us before. The festival has grown from not just a little South Pittsburgh thing, but it's grown bigger and bigger and bigger and includes more communities willing to come and volunteer. And if you come to the festival and volunteer one time, we've got you for life because it's so much fun. You'll want to be a part of it. And really, that's the story of the National Cornbread Festival, volunteerism. We have over a 1,000 volunteers from South Pittsburgh and our greater Marion County community. A lot of people who don't live here anymore come back, and their friends come back and volunteer. And I wish that I had been here when the Cornbread Festival first opened, and because it's just amazing to see how many people are in the street. One of my favorite things about the Cornbread Festival is just how these kids are so excited to work. Throughout this festival, there's a spirit that catches on around here about a week or two before, and uh, it's in the air. And people mow their yards and clean their windows and plant their flowers, and everybody gets ready. It's a great time for family reunions, families coming back. And I don't think I've heard so many people anywhere else say how proud they are that they grew up in this town. I want to say I appreciate the way that the Cornbread Festival is used for our community. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's not just in the city of South Pittsburgh or not just in one school. Uh, it, there's a great effort to try to help a lot of different organizations. What would we do without the Cornbread Festival? Mm, that's a good question. Time and time again that Every person that I know of that's helped with Cornbread Festival has been over backwards, went 110% to give everything they could to the Cornbread Festival. And it's not just to the Cornbread Festival, it's to their community, it's, uh, it's to this country, and I, and I believe that just brings the American spirit out of all of us, truly. I truly do. And, and, uh, there's, uh, it's a great thing, uh, get involved. One of the good things that has come out of this is that the monies that we've generated have gone back into the community, have helped people, have, have helped clothe kids who are going to school, have given scholarships. Uh, we have done a poor job, the, probably the poorest job of anything that we've done with telling those volunteers who work so tirelessly for this festival what the monies that they've helped raise have gone for. We're hopeful that this video, this film will do that. It will show those, those lives that have been impacted by the good things that they've done through this festival.